Hello, this is uh, Richard Law with the uh, Society of Field Inspectors. I want to talk to you a little bit today about competition. You know, I get a lot of phone calls from inspectors that are just getting ready to start out doing field inspections and, and they ask how much competition is there in their area. So what is the, uh, the best way to evaluate competition? Probably the best way to do that is you need to kind of look at who the competition is out there and who you can eliminate. If you start looking at uh, an area in general, you'll find that there are people out there that don't want to work, so they're not competition. You'll find those that are too young, that are too old, they're not competition. You'll find those that are maybe unhealthy, maybe they can't get around very well, they're not uh, competition. You'll find people that uh, are in jail or maybe they're in prison and they're not competition. You have some people that are doing it part-time as, as maybe you'll be doing it part-time so they, they don't have a lot of time to uh, spend out in the field. Maybe they have a full-time job working for the, the government or a, or a large corporation. And so they don't have a lot of time, so they're not really a lot of competition either because they can't do too much. So when you kind of put, out, to put together all the people that just can't do the work, you kind of find out that the only people left to do the job is just you and me. If you are going to uh, build a field inspection business, you're gonna to need to be organized and you're gonna to need to uh, understand marketing. If you take uh, two people, for instance, maybe you get one person that's very smart, but not very organized, and then you take another person that's perhaps not as smart, but very organized, and then probably the latter person will probably get out there and, and beat the bushes and talk to potential customers and, and just uh, because of their organization. Basically, it, it boils down to is to effectively grow a business, you got to get out there and, and kind of beat the bushes. You got to get out there with a, a list of customers and you got to call them, email them, uh, upload your resume maybe to their website. But you got to introduce yourself to them and let them know that you're available and that you can do work in your area. And then after you've made contact, you'll go back and forth and, and you'll find out what they offer. And in talking to you, they'll find out what you offer. And hopefully there's a, a meeting of the minds and, um, and they'll like you and you'll like them and you'll get the job. And then the next thing you'll need to do is uh, show them that you're a good performer, that you can do the job. So basically, in, in the beginning of starting your business, it all comes down to marketing. You're going to have to introduce yourself to companies. You're going to have to sell yourself to companies. You're not going to accept all the work. You're only going to accept work that, uh, that has a payoff, you know, where you're going to make some money. You're going to keep your service area small, okay? You're going to stay close to home. You're not going to cover a big area. And, uh, yeah, you're going to do those things. When you talk to a company and, and find out, you know, the type of inspections they offer, and when you also find out the, uh, the fees that they pay, that's when you're going to determine how big a service area that you can cover. Okay, if they've got large fees, you can cover a larger area than you can cover if they have small fees. And what I found over the years is maybe I'm working for a dozen different companies and, and working for multiple companies is, is a good idea because then when you go to a certain area, maybe you're working for four or five companies and uh, doing a lot of work in a small area so you're, you're more efficient 
and you make more money. So I think that's important. But, but going back to service areas, uh, when I've had 12 different companies I was working for with a, a very large range sometimes in, in the fees that they were paying, so I would have 12 companies and 12 different service areas. So if the fees were bigger, I could cover a bigger area. If the volume was also bigger, I could cover a bigger area. But if the uh, fees were medium or starting to get near low, then I would cover a much smaller area. So the important thing there is you got to kind of make your service area fit uh, the fees that they offer. You can also uh, tell them that, hey, you, you might be able to go out of your service area for them, but you would also expect to get more money. And they would have to provide you with an address and, and, and a type inspection, and, and you would provide them with the cost, the fee that which you, which you would have to get in order to do the job. And build their business quicker and, and make more money. Getting back to uh, competition, most of what you would call the so-called so -called competition is not competition because they don't know where to go to look for jobs. Uh, some of them may find one job, two jobs, maybe five jobs by going online and finding uh, some hiring companies. but. When you do that, you really don't know what you're getting involved with. You don't know how good the companies are, uh, if they have any pay problems, if they're slow pays or no pay companies. So you don't want to get involved there. So one way to eliminate the competition, you know, there's not going to be that much, is to have a good source for companies that you want to contact and get work from. And probably the best source that we can offer to you, and probably the best source in the industry, is the National Field Service Directory. And, and in that directory, what we do is we um, list the better companies out there. For most areas, that's going to be probably around 75 or 80 of the higher quality companies that pay the higher fees. We want you to get connected with good companies. We want you to make money because when you do, that reflects on us, on the advice that we give you. So it's very important that we give you information which is gonna have a payoff for you, where you're gonna get out there and, and do some inspections and enjoy doing them uh, because they're interesting inspections and make some extra money. You can do it uh, part-time for some extra money to pay a bills or if you're in a densely populated area, you can do it uh, full time. And, and even when you're starting part time, you're kind of measuring the opportunity to determine if you like it and if you want to move it to something maybe full time. Sometimes you might even want to get a family member or a friend involved doing the same thing that you're doing. So I, I think the important thing is to have a good source. And like I say that, uh, paper directory which we print and bind and ship um, has a good source for hiring companies. We also give you with that directory a, a, a download, uh, a PDF file which lists uh, contact information on other field reps. And, and that's very important for networking because if you're, at, let's say you're in Houston and you're doing field inspections and you want to grow your business, it's always good to talk to someone else that's in the same business as you are and share information. So what you would do there is you wouldn't uh, try to uh, network with people in your area in Houston because, you know, you compete with each other. But you could talk to someone in San Diego or Boston or Dallas or Miami and share information and you don't compete with each other. So that's really the, uh, the best way to do it. So the directory gives you two things. It gives you uh, good contact information on good companies that you can get work from. And it gives you contact information on other field reps that are doing the same work and uh, information you can share with them, which uh, will make uh, 
you know, both of you are better off in the long run. And usually when you do that marketing, uh, say I'm in Houston and I would call up somebody in San Diego and I would start off the conversation by saying, hello, I'm a field inspector here in Houston. And I know that you're in San Diego and you also do field inspections. I thought maybe we could uh, talk to each other and share some information because we don't compete with each other. We're, we're so far apart. And, and often that works very well. Sometimes they might hang up on you, but uh, most of the time when they hear you know, what you're doing and where you're at, they want to learn more, and of course, uh, about what you do, and you want to learn more, of course, about what they do. I get a lot of questions on training. You know, where do I get the training? Well, when you're first starting out, you're going to find that um, there's some very good uh, companies that offer some very nice fees. And what these companies do is they provide the inspection form. There's nothing that you have to create. And a lot of these forms are simply uh, check the box, uh, fill in a blank type forms. And um, usually what they do is they'll give you some instruction, call it instruction, call it training, on what needs to be done. And they'll either do that by just talking to you on the phone, you know, walking you through it. They may send you a, a video to watch. They may uh, invite you to a webinar where you can get some training or and maybe uh, have an opportunity to uh, ask some questions. So, so the training part of it is pretty straightforward. You know, the company wants you to do a great job. So, of course, they're going to give you what you need, you know, to do that job. Uh, so I think that's important, okay, because um, some uh, new inspectors are kind of reluctant to uh, get started because they, they really don't know if they are qualified to do it, if they're capable of doing it. And I think the answer to that is, is you shouldn't really have a problem, I don't think. I'm looking at the time here and I don't want to make this video uh, too long. I kind of want to get to the to the high points and let you discover some of the other information that's available. If you go up to the uh, SOFI website at fieldinspector.com, you'll see a lot of the information that we offer. You want to also collect, uh, click on the uh, SOFI YouTube videos up there because there's a lot of information there that will help you get started. You can also go direct to the videos by just simply going to SOFI.video. S O F I dot video and then take your time and, and look at the titles on the videos and, and go through the ones that are um, you're most interested in up front you know the other thing you want to do is, is take a look at uh, some of the videos that walk you through some of the resumes that we create we uh, we create the best resumes in the industry there are one-page flyers that say who you are, what you do, and where you do it. And, and we've been designing those resumes for decades. So we know what works. We know how to get attention for you. And like I say, a, a resume uh, is what you need. And if you go back and look at the directory, which gives you the, the companies you need to contact and introduce yourself, and then look at the resumes, which is going to be one of the ways in which you are going to introduce yourself. And those two things were really going to help you eliminate a lot of the competition. Because if you go back and look at all the SOFI members and, and what they have, uh, you're going to find that very, very, very small number of them have both a directory and a resume. So when you have those two items, you're beating out a lot of the competition. You're, you're getting with the higher quality companies, the higher fee companies. You're providing them with a uh, introduction, introduction to them that's very effective. And I think it's uh, just a great way to kind of get started and grow your business and you know do it part-time, move it to full-time, whatever you need to do. 
and, and just make some extra money doing things that you're going to like doing, you know, that are interesting. Uh, be sure to, uh, like I say, go up to uh, fieldinspector.com and kind of look at all the information up there. Uh, you know, look at the blogs. You can also follow uh, Sophie and you can also follow me uh, personally up at Twitter. I'm starting to like uh, Twitter more and more now that Elon Musk is in charge. So, so do those things. Uh, I also take phone calls. You can call me. Uh, you can reach me at area code 352-324-6000. If, if you miss me, uh, leave a message, uh, I'll call you back and, uh, and answer your questions. Uh, you know, before you get started in something new, you want to kind of make sure you get all the information. I think a lot of it's up at fieldinspector.com, but there's probably some holes up there that, that need to be answered. And like I say, you can uh, give me a call. And on that telephone number, that's a, a Florida telephone. so. If you're on the West Coast, remember the time difference. And that's basically it. So I would enjoy talking to you and, and answering your questions and chatting about uh, anything you want to chat about. Because I think it's important that you uh, kind of know what's going on. Uh, go up to the Sophie store and see what's up there. Everything that we offer, you know, has a satisfaction guarantee. So there's no risk to you. And like I say, we'll, we'll talk to you. We're not afraid to talk to you. We'll, we'll guarantee any products that you purchase because we think that they'll help you just, you know, grow your business. So like I say, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more from you. And I hope this video has given you a lot of good information to kind of make you more comfortable and, and help you decide because you have to make the decision as to whether this is something you want to do. And it's not for everyone, but it is for a lot of people. And you can kind of make it fit your schedule and other things you're doing. And, and we'll be there to help you. So take care and, and have a great day.